Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the showdown between the Empire and the Chaos Dwarves. It's going to be myself with Carl Franz facing off against Anticity, who's going to be coming in with the Sorcerer Prophet. So let's get this party started. Let's have some fun and see if Sigmar can endure the wrath of the Chaos Dwarves. Now, as far as the build goes, it's going to be a couple state troopers in the front line. Now, Chaos Dwarves have some of the best anti-infantry artillery in the game. Magma cannons are really good. They obviously have Dreadquake mortars, a lot of things that can absolutely annihilate your infantry. So my kind of game plan here was to not bring that good... Uh, of an infantry corps, just bring a couple of them and then use wagons, cavalry, mobility, and have big Franz try and carry the day. Now, the reason why Franz is really good in this matchup, as opposed to Boris, is he does magic damage. And Astrogoth, I think, is the strongest of the Chaos Dwarf Lords, and he has the ability to give himself 30 uh, physical resist permanently over the course of a game. So having that magic damage to surpass his ward save and actually finish him, I think is quite good. So we have the Prince and Emperor here, backed up by some state troopers. A life wizard, obviously, if you're going to be going wagons with Carl Franz, having a life wizard to drop those fat heels on those units is really, really nice. And wagons actually, actually got nerfed again. So in this patch, wagons did get nerfed. They lost, I believe, some of their ammunition and some other stats. But overall, in my testing, which has been a couple games, they're still quite good. So don't worry about it, Empire players. In the back, we have the Sunmaker. Sunmaker was always really good against the uh, basic dwarves. So I figured that, you know, having the Sunmaker against Chaos Dwarves for their, uh, infernal, their infernal infantry and some of the more elite stuff, or even their Chaos Dwarf Warriors, which are actually like 750 gold, they're not cheap, uh, would be good. So we do have the uh, Sunmaker here to kind of blast those bad boys. In the back, we do also have the Silver Bullets. Silver Bullets are sneaky, and uh, there are some scary monsters on the Chaos Dwarf roster. So they could have a Lamasu, a uh, Bale Taurus. A great Taurus, whatever. The Kadai Fireborn, Destroyers. Having something to punch down those guys I think is quite important. Another thing to worry about with Chaos Dwarves is their mobility. So they have really good mobility. Hobgoblins are super cost effective. These little cheap cavalry. They're basically like, you know, Illyrian, not quite as good as Illyrian Reavers, but they're in the ballpark of like Glade Riders for the Wood Elves. And they're excellent at diving Empire backfields. So we do have a unit of Demogriff Knights as well as a unit of Empire Knights to try and fight them off. Now for the Great Anticity here, he's coming in with Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits. Now these guys are ludicrously strong um, because of their precursor ammo, which you'll be seeing here. So they have anti-infantry, they do not have armor piercing, but they have poison, but they have this precursor ammo, which has 30 what missile strength apiece. Now it only has two volleys, but you guys will see it. It does a lot of damage, and I think it is going to be a staple of Chaos Dwarf play for sure. We got four of those. He does also have Gorda's Backstabber, the legendary hero. This guy's a raid boss, super, super hard to kill. Kind of like Sigvald in a way where he has, um, I believe he does he have the healing. Let's see if he brought it. He actually didn't bring the healing this game, but he does have a way to heal if you uh, decide you want to go that route, but just opted to bring him for, only, he only costs like 350 if you, um, you know, if you bring him like this and his stats are crazy good. We have the Sorcerer Prophet of Fire. So this bad boy up in the sky, going to be looking to do burning heads. He's mounted on a Lamasu as well, which is a badass choice because the Lamasu does have a couple bound spells. So if he wants to like dual France for a second, he can use Enfeebling Foe. He can use the Withering to lower down my Demogriff Knight's armor or something. Burning Head is obviously good against the Empire. And he has the Infernal Engineer for Missile Resist on himself, making him quite good against my wagons. And Sorceress Miasma, look at that. Negates magic weapons within the effect aura. Oh, that's so cool. So that's actually going to be dampening the magic of Galmaraz. Hmm, interesting. Chaos Dwarf Warriors in the back. Chaos Dwarf Warriors, one unit of Infernal Iron Sworn and the dreaded double Magma Cannon. So Magma Cannons don't do that well against Cavalry. Uh, as well as like single entity models, but they're quite good against infantry. So you can see one shot from the Magma Cannon just dunking on my swordsman here in the front line. Absolutely brutal damage. As the wagons encounter the first wave of Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits, which are a really, really nice screen against my army. The Precursor Ammo gets in there and kind of tickles them a little bit. And uh, yeah, the battle is on, ladies and gentlemen, as the Sorcerer's Prophet or the Sorcerer Prophet of Fire flying around on his Lamasu. Doesn't have a ton of armor piercing on that mount though. That's the one thing. He's got an armor piercing uh, blunderbuss gun. He's got like a little hand cannon, but uh, the Lamasu does not have good armor piercing, whereas the Bale Taurus does. So that's kind of the exchange there. But yeah, the magma cannons are really devastating my army in the backfield. You can see here the two swordsmen getting pounded. Well, the Sunmaker is going to be unleashing some big fire here into the uh, Chaos Dwarf Warriors. So these guys definitely getting peppered down. And a correction from what I said earlier, Chaos Dwarf Warriors cost 650, and the Great Weapons, I believe, cost 750. And then when you get up to the next tier of units, uh, the ROR Chaos Dwarf Infantry costs 900, the Blazing Beards of Basharic, and the uh, Iron Sworn are like 1,000, and then 1,300 for the big Blasting Charge variant, which is the Infernal Iron Sworn. These guys back here, super good. Their Blasting Charges have super high armor piercing, so you can use them against Cavalry, Elite Infantry, uh, Chaos Warriors are going to love fighting those, that's for sure. So France is just going for it. I was kind of looking at his army and I was like, 
you know, he doesn't have a lot to deal with Carl Franz outside of maybe like his character here, and the character would lose badly. So the Prince and Emperor going to be getting an attack on the Lamasu here, and he does get the rear charge. Now, the, one of the advantages Lamasus have compared to the Baletauruses, they have much higher melee defense. But Franz with Galmaraz, fully, fully powered Galmaraz here, anti-large 600 weapon strength, is able to get some good damage on the uh, the, prof the Prophet here, but the Prophet is able to get away, and uh, Galmaraz will uh, you know be waving angrily as he chases him. Now on the side, we do get ambushed here by some hobgoblins, and one of my Empire Knights did get swarmed, so I tried to attack some hobgoblins. The sneaky gets, and uh, some wolf riders had popped out of the trees here and got a nice ambush on me. So these poor Empire Knights are going to be swarmed. I do use a regrowth to try and buy some time with them. In the meantime, on the other side, the hobgoblins moving in from all directions, swarming all over my wagons. But the uh, Demogriff Knights are able to sweep out several units of these, and the dummies are going to be hard to stop for sure. Now, back on the other side, Franz flying around. I thought about going after the Magma Cannons, but I felt as if Franz might be needed back here, so the Prince and Emperor is going to be heading back this direction, while the Sunmaker, now shooting in the distance, is going to be putting some withering fire here into the Infernal Iron Sworn. And that's definitely the most high-value target that I can uh, hit here as the shots rain from downtown. Do they hit a little bit? Not really. He's able to dodge that, so well played. Now, looking at the bounce power, it's pretty even at this point. I've really been forced onto the back foot. Most of my infantry, I've just straight up pulled back. My spearmen, my troopers, I pulled back out of range of the magma cannons, and I'm just trying to get value with my wagons, with Franz, and with my demogriff knights, and sweep up whatever I can. And hopefully the Infernal Iron Sworn will be taken out as well by the Sunmaker, but it's almost out of ammo at this point. It has gotten about a thousand, and the magma cannon shoots into it. So that is one big advantage. When you're playing Empire against basic dwarves, uh, for example, if you use Sunmaker, you can kill their artillery crews. But the fact that the Chaos Dwarf uh, artillery pieces are generally all single entity models, you can't really have artillery duels without using like cannon type units. So it's a little bit of a different paradigm for sure. Up in the sky, Franz is going to be hunting down the Sorcerer Prophet, and uh, he's certainly been doing well. And every time that guy's kind of rolled past me here, we've gotten the War Wagons to put some big hurt, and it looks like he's going to be landing on the ground here, trying to avoid the Franz while the Hobgoblins and Gorda's backstabber lurking nearby. Anticity also going to be screening with his Goblin Laborer units, and if you guys haven't noticed this, they do have the Malign Authority ability. So basically, when the Laborer units are very, very close quarters with a... Uh, with a Chaos Dwarf unit, which has the Contempt trait, they get a buff. It's very similar to like Harmony. So, you know, formations can be very, very pertinent for Chaos Dwarves. And I would say that's one of the big strengths of the Chaos Dwarves is they have like insane diversity in their play tactics. They can just do all sorts of stuff. So the Sunmaker gets taken out, but not before it fires its last payload and gets those Infernal Iron Sworn quite low. Anticity was manually dodging the entire time, but the Sunmaker does uh, get taken out here, but not before it uses all of its ammo. And now Franz, you know, he's just like, why am I scared of this back here? They literally have nothing that's good against me. So he gets his giant Warhammer and Deathclaw, and he's going to be clawing down ye old uh, Magma Cannon, which uh, I believe has probably gotten some good value. Yeah, even 2,000 value, but that's from killing the Sunmaker after it had used its ammo, so maybe not so good. But yeah, Magma Cannons obviously only have 11 melee defense despite having 70 armor, which means they're going to be durable against small arms fire, like archers and things like that. But against like a high melee attack armor piercing thing, they're going to go down super, super quickly. So the Chaos Dwarves going to be sounding the Horde of Hashet as the Chaos Dwarves move forward, giving the leadership buff to the Goblin Laborers. Very thematic, having them use their uh, Laborers to kind of charge through in the fourth quarter. But the Demogriff Knights of Sigmar stand firm. Their high armor really makes them quite durable against many of these units here, as the Magma Cannons, of course, don't have good armor piercing. And it looks like the Bale, uh, the Lamasu Lord, is going to be jumping in and trying to fight them. So we pull back, we get the regrowth, and I probably should have just stayed and fought, to be honest, and maybe might have been able to get a kill on that Sorcerer Lord, but just being very, very cautious, pulling back my state troopers while... Uh, Franz does finish off one Magma Cannon, and now the Prince and Emperor is going to be coming across and going after the other one, which is one of the main things that could still, you know, potentially finish off my army. Magma Cannons, like I said, don't do a ton of damage against Cavalry, but they still have 500 weapon strength, so it would be able to potentially kill Demogriff Knight models, right? So the Lord is going to be running. Sorcerer does get popped by the wagon, so he's going to be running for the hills as the Empire Wagons do pull back, and the Brave State Troopers of Sigmar are going to be meeting an unholy horde of uh, Hobgoblins. And Hobgoblins are very, very money. They are, uh, I would say, yeah, they could probably beat state troopers pretty decisively. Like a Hobgoblin Sneaky Git, the dual-wielding variant with poison, would probably trash a swordsman pretty hard. Uh, the bonus for his infantry would make the difference. Granted, a swordsman is much cheaper. Swordsman only costs, like, just, just upwards of 300, whereas the Sneaky Gits are 575. So it, it, it's balanced as it should be. I, I would say they did a pretty good job of that. War wagons maneuvering about and just ripping shots wherever they can. And despite the ammunition nerfs, I haven't run out of ammo on those bad boys yet. And Franz just putting this game on his back. The Prince and Emperor has had enough of this artillery, and he's going to be uh, taking these magma cannons down pretty hard. As one last attack from Deathclaw will probably finish the job, although Deathclaw missed that one. It's, you know, right when we're watching. He's just nervous because we're watching him, but should be able to get the job done. And yes, Deathclaw does get the killing blow here. And now the Chaos Storm is going to be making more, more or less their last stand. Uh, we do get the Sorcerer Prophet coming back here on the other side as the War Wagons circle about. I figured War Wagons would be very good against Chaos Dwarves simply because 
of their uh, range. And Chaos Dwarfs, a lot of their guns only have 90 range. They do have the Infernal Iron Sworn, but they would get countered by Sunmaker. So I was like, the rock, paper, scissors of it is pretty good. Uh, the Sunmaker counters the things that can feasibly do well here. But one tech that I think would be really good would be the Infernal Castellan, which is a hero character with a long range rifle to blast against these guys. But it's hard to say. So Gordos is in here with the boys. The swordsman, this is very much like an Empire cinematic. We see the state troopers being swarmed by the forces of evil as the Chaos Dwarves saturate in here. Fran's coming in, you know, being brought to his men. He's going to be wielding his Reikland, Runefang, and Galmaraz, and hopefully we'll be able to push these guys back. We'll have to see. Bounce of Power, very, very Sigmar favorite here, as the Demogriff Knights have also been huge MVPs. I think Demis would be a staple in this matchup as well, taking advantage of the fact that Chaos Dwarves don't have a ton of stuff outside of their... They would have to fight them, like, with Bull Centaurs, which I think with Regrowth and Franz, you would have the advantage, but the Bull Centaurs with the, the Great Weapons are really nasty. I, I would probably be an even trade versus Demogriff Knights, but you, again, have the healing and they don't, so... I think you might be able to edge that fight and, and be in good shape. Hard to say. Demi's cleaning up here. Wagons just shooting the Chaos Dwarfs in the back here as Franz gets a massive terror out here on Gordas as well as the Goblin Laborers. And that is going to be the end of the road for the Chaos Dwarfs there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Certainly was a fun duel of fates. Always fun to have an excuse to use Franz. And even more that Franz is actually, I would say, the preferred, uh, preferred choice in this matchup. So taking a look. Demogriff's 1,000 value, but still we're fighting to the bitter end. Sunmaker didn't quite pay for itself or it came close. Um, wagons are all very, very good. And uh, Franz, obviously, he carried that game. If I had not had Franz, like, I would have lost. Um, if I, Boris, Boris probably could have done the job too, but not quite as, Franz hits how much harder. Uh, for the Magma Cannons, they were good. They're still a 1700 here. And despite not having many targets, they still performed. I still think having Magma Cannons could be good. Um, I, you know what I think you could probably do? In this situation, you just have your two Magma Cannons move up and kill the Sunmaker, ignoring everything else. And then you you just have your, your Blunderbusses and your, your guns like behind your line. And then you move up and the Empire is going to get probably get trash canned. Like uh, we can actually go and do a little theory crafting right now. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go theory craft. Take a look at what I would probably do if I was playing Chaos Swords against Empire. And what, as someone who's an Empire main, what I would hate to see. I would be something like we're going to theory craft here in a second. All right, guys, let's do it. All right, since that was a land battle, we'll just go ahead and do a land battle as well. So probably your boy Astrogoth is still the best. Um, he's he's just so incredibly difficult to kill. Although Zaytan is also good because of the net, and Empire is a very mobile faction, so having a net character could be very strong. Man, the choices. Man, these are some really, really tough choices. Anyways, for the Infantry Corps, Dwarf Infantry are very good against the Empire. I would probably just go super wide with them and bring two Infernal Ironsworn. The Fire Glaives, um, these guys are super resilient against cavalry. And uh, they have, yeah, they, I think this would be really, really good against the Empire forces. So on top of that, two Magma Cannons. So the Magma Cannons will be able to probably kill the Sunmaker. Uh, unless the Empire goes super cannon heavy, if they went with like triple cannons, you could run into a little bit of danger with this build. But even still, you're going to have enough like diving harass that I think you'd be okay. So probably get a bunch of Hobgoblins here. Uh, do you want any of the Archers? I don't think so. Probably one of the bulls with a great weapon. And then maybe we just go for like a ch super cheap Lord and just don't worry about it. So we get a Sorcerer Prophet, which I did like the direction he was going there. Lord of Hashet, probably not the way here. Probably get Spirit Leech and uh, Buna to deal with Cavalry. Cut these items. They're, they're decent. One of them is actually a heal, but I don't think it's super necessary. And the Infernal Engineer. And would we want to get in mounts of some sort? We could do this. And then we would have to find, yeah, I think just on foot is probably okay. Although having the mobility is really, really useful. Like the Great Taurus is pretty cheap. It's only 600 as a mount option. And the Infernal Guard Fire Glaive. So maybe you just do one of those and then two of the cannons. But yeah, these guys should deal with Demogriff Knights. They should deal with Empire Knights. And you also do have the Bull Centaurs. You can overcast Spirit Leech from downtown to try and shut down the Sunmaker as well in tandem with the two Magma Cannons. I do think something like this could be good. You could also just cut these guys and get like a couple like Chaff Units. Um, although I think the Chaos Dwarf Infantry, once you're able to deal with that, would be nice. Yeah, so something like this, maybe just two of you guys and a little bit of a swarming element. Is there anything else we would want to really like try and get to win the artillery duel? I don't think so. I think the Goblin Skirmish, the little Hobgoblins are really, really good for disruption's sake. You could get a couple Orc Laborers on the wings and just move them up, or you could even deserve like just throw like a bunch of Goblins out there and and you know get like an unholy amount of bodies this build actually feels really good you have the contempt mechanic so it's going to buff them up you have the two magma cannons you have the uh the anti-cav you have the anti-large i think this build will be very strong so hopefully that helps guys chaos dwarves have such a dynamic roster there's so much you can do it's insane and i do think they're going to be good i think they'll be a great faction and uh nothing seems like terribly overpowered except astrogoth in my opinion but in general uh yeah pretty fun stuff gg see you next time